Welcome friends. In this video, we are going to see the temperature analysis of ABB servo drive with respect to programming method. This video in particular will be very useful for the engineering students for their end semester project. Please watch it in full. We will go on to the presentation. Here we go. Now this paper, Temperature Analysis of ABB Servo Drive with respect to programming method is already published in International Journal of Science and Research in June 2018. Now I am making a e-presentation of that journal so that the ideas will be clear. There were more recommendations to make presentation of this and for that I am doing this. I should be grateful to the publishers who initiated these things. Now, this is our robotics lab, and we have at VSV and Botany College a ABB robo. It is a six axis robo, and it has a reach that is the maximum distance it can move as 1.44 meter, and it can lift a payload of 5 kg maximum. It's a small size robo, and we are going to that the problem of my study is based on this robo. This robo has a servo drive to move that. And from the literature, I have heard that the, if the heat generator in this servo drive is more than 120 degrees centigrade, the servo drive will lead to inaccuracy and fault. So how to rectify this? That was the theme of this paper. Now this robo, I told you, it has six axes or six degrees of freedom. Let us see what it is. It has three major axes and three minor axes. The three major axes are, we call it as a twist, the base can turn. Then roll, that is the lower arm can roll and the upper arm can roll. These are the three major axes. And apart from that, you have three minor axes. The use of this minor axis is this robo, it's a welding robo, it can make a welding. While making welding, the welding torch must be always straight. So to reorient the welding torch when it moves, we are using these three degrees of freedom. We call it as a pitch, which is nothing but the up and down movement, yaw, which is the left and right movement, and roll is a rotary movement. These are the six degrees of freedom of the robo. Now we will see these degrees of freedom in the robo itself. Now in this, now this diagram shows the first degree of freedom, that is the twist of the robo. The robo can turn 170 degree clockwise and 170 degree anti-clockwise. This is the first degree of freedom of this robo. Then the next degree is this lower arm. This lower arm can move in the forward direction about 70 degrees and in the backward direction about 65 degrees. That is the second degree of freedom. And after that, you have the third arm, which looks like a tusk of an elephant. Now it can move down by 65 degree and it can move up as shown here up to 70 degrees from its normal position. These are the major axes that are used to take a component from one place and move it to another place. Now this is the servo motor that we are talking about. This is the main motor that gets heated up. Now the work is how to reduce the heat of this servo drive if that is what we've done in this paper. Now, the robo has two methods of programming. That is, it has a move L command and a move J command. The move L command makes the robo, the end effector, to move along a straight line. The move J command, actually, it moves along an arc. Only one joint moves and it moves along an arc and it generates lesser heat. Now, the study is made like this. That is, the robo is programmed to take a component from this tray A a peg from this tray A and it has to move it here and place it at this table B. That is the work it is doing. It is doing that repeatedly for many five or six components. Now the program is done like this. You have this one is the first method of programming wherein we move the component straight from the hole. Now to remove the peg from the hole it has to move straight. Then this to move to the next tray. That is also a straight line. 
then it has to move straight to place the component again in tray B. So here I have all move L commands. Instead, here what we have is, here this no alteration, it is just a move L. This one is a move J, that is it moves along an arc using move J command. See here, you have a move J command. Then the last one is move L command. So this is one type of program and this is the other type of program. And also you can see here the Z0. Z0 means there is no zone error. That is it goes exactly here to this point and from that it moves to the this point and from there it moves here. Here I have given a zone error of 50 means it can have some variation in this location. Similarly some variation in this location and then it moves exactly. Now why I am giving this variation is if you give a slight variation the servo drive will not be loaded heavily that it uh, the closed loop control will not be there and it will not get heated up. So these are the two variant of program I have written and I have checked whether there is a difference in temperature rise from this program and from this program. Okay. So for measuring that these are all the small things that I have done. The engineering students you please note that I have, have a sensor that is a LM35 sensor that I have interlinked to a UNO board. So this analog signal is converted into a digital signal by a UNO board. This UNO board I have linked to this computer using MATLAB. So the temperature can be measured in equal intervals and it will be stored in the Excel sheet. This is the experimental setup I have designed for my work to gather the data. Okay, and these are all the data gathered. So I have worked with the robo for 10 minutes time. I have taken 20 readings, that is one reading in each 30 seconds. So 30, 60, 90 and so on. And these are all the temperature for one set of program. This is the temperature for the other set. I used a move geno, so I have a slightly reduced temperature rise. Now this is for velocity of 100. Velocity means the robo, the moving velocity. Next, I have changed it to 500, 1000 and 2000 and I have recorded all these readings. Now, if I see these, there is a remarkable difference between the first program and the second program. The program with move L commands and the program with move J commands. When you use a move J command, the temperature rise is slightly lesser. So, I have analyzed these using SPSS package, statistical package for social science. In that, I have made a difference in t-test. That is a paired sample t-test. That is for velocity 100, I am comparing move L and move J. Velocity 500, I am comparing move L and move J. For 1000, you are comparing it. For 2000, I am comparing it. Right? The table value for this reading, totally I had 20 readings. So for 19 degrees of freedom and 95% confidence, the table value of T is 2.093. But the actual calculated values, all these values are greater than the table value, showing that there is a remarkable difference. So, when you change the programming method, the servo drives get a little amount of heat. So, that is what I conclude in this work. Okay. So, the results are that uh, when I go in for these MoveJ commands, the temperatures are reducing. And so, it's a very good uh, method. See, the, you can reduce the temperature by various methods. One way of doing is you can reduce the payload, that is the load that the robot is carrying. But it will not be apt because the robots are for, 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 done for that and it has to carry that load. You can reduce the error zone. I told you, you know, the Z0 means it will move exactly. Now, in reducing the error zone will increase the temperature actually. And all the time, uh, increasing of error zone is not possible because it has to move to the exact point or it will drop the component somewhere else. And uh, we can reduce the velocity to reduce the temperature, but the robo productivity will go down. So this is the best method, that is uh, changing the command from move L to move J is the best method of programming this robo and we are thereby reducing the temperature. So I have made one thing that is uh, one type of uh, analysis that is the temperature reduction in uh, robo and I have uh, compared that and I have used a statistical tool for that. So this is how I have done this. I must be thankful for the International Journal of Science and Research for providing me an opportunity to present my paper as a e-presentation. Thank you sir. Thank you one and all.